I'm Ahmed Ahmed, and you're watching Beauty in the East TV. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum. We're here with the very funny comedian and actor, Mr. Ahmed Ahmed. We're actually going to get up close and personal with him tonight, so are you ready for that? Ooh, I'm nervous. What was it like growing up in Riverside, California as an Arab American? Growing up in Riverside, California as an Arab American was like the, the TV show The Munsters. <laughs> <laughs> we were like the bizarre family on the block in black and white. We were the only Arab family, I think, in the whole city. It was like being a fish out of water. We had to learn how to assimilate quickly without losing the cultural values and avoid being yelled at by your mom and dad because you're trying to become too American. There's a fine balance. My name's Ahmed Ahmed, so yeah. there was always the running joke, you know, do your parents have a stuttering problem? You have four sisters? I have four sisters. Thanks for doing your research. I think I told you that, actually. Did they ever uh, dress you up as a girl? They tried. They tried, didn't work out. So pe people got hurt. <laughs> I fought. Are you close to them? I am. My sisters are crazy and beautiful at the same time. You've said your parents are like Mr. and Mrs. Roper. <laughs> right. Three's Company was, was one of my favorite sitcoms, and my parents remind me of the Arab Ropers, the landlords, who are always, they love each other, they have to live together, but they're always, you know, fighting with each other because that's what keeps the relationship alive. Our family was like, a sitcom growing up. Four girls, two boys, Egyptian immigrant family, you know, transplanted from Helluland, Egypt, which is the sort of farm sticks outside of Cairo, to Riverside, California, which is this really nice middle class, you know, white suburb. And as a child, what were you like? Were you naughty boy? Were you I the was nerd? so nice. I was a nice boy. You listened I was. to your mom and dad? I did until about, until about 15 or 16. Oh, what happened then? Uh, I don't know. There's something in a teenager's blood that just, you know... Rebelled. Rebels, yeah. I, <laughs> How did you rebel? I, you know, I did everything. I smoked cigarettes. I pierced my ears. I dyed my hair. I tried to dye it blonde, but it turned orange. That's <laughs> embarrassing. So you moved to Hollywood to become an actor at 19. Was it hard when you moved to get work? I told my parents I was moving there to pursue the uh, the entertainment industry and my dad accused me of being gay <laughs> right out of the gate what thought are you a gay and then we didn't talk for seven years but when I started working more as an actor and I started getting parts so that's when my dad came back around he was like I always knew and you got it from me yeah, <laughs> you wanted stuff. to take credit for everything right? everything but I felt pigeonholed as an Arab American Muslim artist who, who refused to change my name. Mm -hmm. So whenever a picture would come across a casting person's desk for the, you know, American guy with brown hair, they're not gonna consider me. So when they see, you know, Ahmed Ahmed, they're like, put the picture away, and then when the terrorist film is being cast, they bring you in. I got frustrated and was trying to reinvent myself, and I figured what better way than one of the highest art forms in the world, and that's mm -hmm. stand-up comedy. I technically quit acting for a while. I told my agent to buzz off. Mm -hmm. I was begging her, please, get me into other things. She's like, change your name, change your name. I'm like, I'm not gonna change my name. I'm from California, I'm a, mm -hmm. I'm a white guy. <laughs> Stuck in an Arab person's body. Get me out of here. Talking about being Muslim in Hollywood, what is that like? Muslim in Hollywood? Ooh. I don't know if we'll ever be invited into the party. I don't know if we'll ever get a membership to the club. Yeah, because who would play the bad guy in the movie? Well, we play the bad guy or somebody else would just simply tell our story the way we don't want it told. Mm -hmm. So I think the idea is for us, <clears throat> Middle Easterners, Arabs, Muslims, Americans, to do stuff like this, create talk shows and platforms and stand-up comedy and, and film and writing and it's our responsibility. We can't really blame anybody. That's the beauty of getting our voice out, is who best will tell our story except for ourselves. What are some things that nobody knows about you? Well, this is, this is gonna sound really corny, but I love to cook. Favorite type of music? I like everything except for uh, techno and trance, which I don't even think are real words. But your all-time favorite is? 
And I say this on record, the 80s was the best genre of music ever. You just performed in D.C. In a right. very uh, popular comedy tour. I was part of a critically acclaimed comedy show called the Funatical Tour, F-U-N, Attical. Oh. You and your sisters put on this fantastic uh, tour that you... Shameless it, plug. So you've been traveling to the Middle East. Tell us about your new film, Just Like Us. I used to be part of a comedy troupe called the Access of Evil Comedy Tour. And it just became this sort of cult hit in the Middle East. Maz and I went back a few times and did a sort of, from the guys who brought you Access of Evil, Ahmed Maz and friends. So we brought American comics over to see how they would do, and they did really well. Then the third year, 2009, we did a all-American lineup comedy show. It was in Dubai, Lebanon, Saudi Arabia, and Egypt. And we ended it in New York City. We filmed about 200 hours of footage and cut it into a 72-minute documentary. We've been to 23 or 4 festivals. What is it about? Just Like Us is a celebration of culture and comedy. It's through my eyes. It's like a travel log. You kind of get to see an inside peak of the Middle East. It kind of takes everything you hear about Middle East and Muslims and Arabs and stuff you see on the news and we kind of just flipped it on its head and just showed a positive light and showed that despite religious and cultural differences or gender differences, at the end of the day, Arabs and Muslims are just, just like us over here in America and around the world. And that's the title of the film, Just Like Us. Wow, I mean, I actually do know a lot more about you. I hope I didn't offend you. <laughs> offend me. <laughs> or you're like, you know what, you're kind of boring. They didn't say anything juicy. <laughs> Thank you so much for Thank sitting you. down and talking to us. And uh, Great to hang out with you, and thanks we'll, for having me on your show. We'll have you back.